Hey guys, welcome back to series three, episode 13 of our house renovations. And to be honest, we are so near the end. We probably only have a couple of videos left of our house renovation series. But don't worry because the final few videos are very exciting. We know we say this all the time, it's very exciting, but we are excited we are because excited. in today's video, we are doing something which is basically tying the whole house together or definitely tying the whole downstairs of the house together because we are tackling the flooring, the electric underfloor and the tiling. So when we very first got this house, one thing that we noticed was there was lots of different types of flooring and different heights of flooring and it felt like a bit of a patchwork which we didn't particularly like. And now whilst I'm in the mood of it, I think it's time that we wave goodbye to the wooden floor. We wanted to come in here and flatten out the floor entirely from the very front of the house to the very back of the house. Our new floor in the new extension is this bit here. You can kind of see the seam from the old floor to the new floor right there. And the wooden floor is basically battened on there and it's risen up. We want the same floor height to be throughout the whole house. So from the front door right out there, all the way through to the bifold doors over there. We want one flat level floor, which basically means that this wooden floor has to come up. So when we did the extension, we worked out the heights of that extension to be able to run the same flooring all the way through to the front door of the house. The floor is almost done. It runs from the bifold doors all the way through to the kitchen door. It will be the same floor going out to the front door, but obviously we haven't really tackled that room out there at the moment so that will be done in due course and that is basically meaning that we ne now need to run the same tiled flooring in the kitchen and the extension through into the utility the downstairs toilet and this this final room of the house but before we can actually do that we have to do another thing and that is install electric underfloor heating now we're actually going to be installing two separate electric underfloor heatings one in this side which is the kind of the entrance side the dog bed area so it doesn't get cold toes and also another one in the utility so we can control them independently on two separate thermostats but before we can actually install the electric underfloor heating we have to do one other thing and that is cover the entire floor of this big room which is a thermal tile backerboard <laughs> These thermal tile backer boards are basically used. So when we put our electric underfloor heating on top of it, the, the thermal section or the insulation section here stops any heat being wasted going back down into the floor and being wasted underneath the house. All of the heat from the electric underfloor is then reflected back up into the actual room to make the room hot and not being wasted by going underneath. And being a thermal tile backer board also then means that we can tile straight onto these boards without having to put anything else down. Now this black tube is hidden behind this freshly plastered and freshly painted wall and the reason for that is because I knew that we were going to be putting underfloor heating down and you need to basically get cables from the underfloor heating up through the wall to the thermostat which is going to be sat here and we've got two of these we've got one here and also on the other side of the room we've also got another one where a thermostat and a black tube is hidden behind the wall on that side that is basically preparation, knowing that I was going to be installing the underfloor heating and I know I need to get cables up and down through the wall. And doing prep work like this basically means your future self is just gonna thank you because you've prepared the things that you're gonna be doing in the future to make it easier for yourself in the future. By putting that draw cable in means that I can just drag that sensor straight through the wall and out into the floor. I can tape the, the cables from the underfloor heating to the red cable and drag it up through and make it really easy for myself because you need two cables to go through the wall. You need one for power to turn on the underfloor heating. You need another one from the thermostat, which is a sensor. So the thermostat knows the temperature of the underfloor heating. So the power cable 
table and a sensor basically has to drop through the wall. So that black tube is just making life easy for myself. Well, there we go. That is a board fully fastened down to the floor and we're using these like big flat washers which really help to kind of like press those boards down or screw those boards down to the wooden floor. If there's any sections of the floor which are concrete, that they advise to use some form of like tile adhesive to stick these down, which is just like this section right here. Now this is a solid floor which has already been self-leveled. So I have to use that tile adhesive to stick those boards down to this, where from this section all the way back through the rest of the room is a wooden suspended floor, which basically means that I can use those screws and washers to hold those types of boards down. Okay, so those insulation boards or those thermal boards, tile backer boards are fully fastened to the floor. They're stuck down and screwed down. So it's gonna give me a nice rigid floor to lay my tiles on. But before I can lay the tiles, I now have to roll out the electric underfloor heating, which comes on a big roll or a mat like this. And this is one of the cables I was on about, which has to go up through the walls. So this is basically the power cable, which goes from the thermostat and turns this on. We use a company called Rayotech and we've used them in the rest of the house and they're great, not sponsored. No, oh. we paid full... Full whack. <laughs> well, to be honest, we paid full whack for everything in the house. We have, 100%. But yeah, they've been great. They work super... Super well. <laughs> super. It comes on this really good mat, actually. Which really is like sticky. a... Yeah, it's like a sticky mat. The cable is pretty thin as well. So it basically means that your tile adhesive can just squidge over these. Um, and it does stick down onto the floor this really nicely. This is the nicely, elite version. Which is basically the thinnest version they make. Yes. So these levels are where the utility units are going to go, so we know that we can run that mat underneath those units either. Now we just hope they bought the right size. Because unfortunately, you cannot cut no. that mat down. It is a set size. No pressure. No pressure. Before I'm actually going to start to lay this out, I'm going to test that the mat is working and it's not faulty because the last thing you want to happen is to lay out your electric underfloor, then you tile it and then realize that it's actually faulty because that would basically mean you have to knock up all of the tiles and start again, which you don't want. So in the instructions of the electric underfloor heating, it will give you a resistance uh, that each individual mat should have so you know that it's actually working. So depending on the size of the mat, it will give you a different uh, resistance value that you need to test for. And to test it, you can basically just use a multimeter, which I've got here. So to test the resistance, we're gonna turn this multimeter around to the 200 down here. And then we grab the cable, which goes into the electric underfloor. And then we can put the positive and negative onto the two cables on here. And then the value which should appear on here should be around 90. So it said from about 89 to 90 ish. So 88.9 is absolutely perfect, meaning that this electric underfloor is all working okay. And like I said just now, we're actually going to be installing two of these electric underfloor heatings. Both of them are four square meters and the wattage is 600 watts. So combined, when they're both on, this room will have 1200 watts of electric underfloor heating, which should be enough. But later on, not in this video, in a couple of videos time, we're also going to be installing infrared panels on the ceiling as well. So a full combined heat from above and heat from below should give this a really nice warm feeling. And it's basically what we've done in the rest of the house. start tiling or putting a floor down that you cannot change it so you just need to think ahead into the future of where certain bits of furniture might be going or 
mats for like a floor mat so we've left a section over by the front door knowing that we're going to be having a doormat that we don't want the electric underfloor heating to be under the doormat because we don't want it to cause any kind of overheating issues and likewise this section here this is the sort of dog bed area so again I've not run any of the electrical cables where the dog bed is going to be. Laying the mat out is a simple thing because it comes on that mat and it just sticks straight down. But knowing exactly what you want to do in the long run is the hard thing because you've really got to make sure that you put it down where you'll never be able to change it again. And now we're both happy with how that underfloor heating is situated, we can now tape our cables to that draw cable and drag it up through the wall to the thermostat, both the sensor and that power cable. Now previously when we had the tiles fitted we actually employed a tile fitter to come and lay the tiles for us because I didn't really have enough confidence to do it myself and do a good enough job. But for this room I actually got the confidence myself to actually do the tiling myself which I am so pleased I did. So to think now that I'm probably about three quarters of the way through this sort of big tiling job for me. Anyway, this would probably take a normal professional tiler, I don't know, three, four days to actually complete. It's taken me a little bit longer than that, obviously, because I am a little bit slower. But the satisfaction I can see now in this room finally coming together and actually looking like one room is kind of lost for words in a way because this has been such a big mammoth task to get it to the the level it is now and the floor is like the final thing that really brings this whole room together because it's always felt like separate rooms and it's always felt like a building site because we've been doing this for such a long time but laying these tiles is really really making this whole house feel like it's one house and no longer a building site and a house. Oh, I'm honestly so excited to see this floor go down. And to be honest, one of the most satisfying things about laying these tiles, knowing that when I fitted these bifold doors months and months ago now, that I actually got the heights and the measurements exactly right so this tile can now slide straight underneath the door and i don't have to like heighten or change the door that to me is very satisfying <laughs> So you might be wondering to yourself, why have I kind of stopped doing the floor or not finished the floor, not grouted the floor yet, and moved on to doing some of the wooden architraves around the door frames? That is because I like to make life more difficult for myself than I really should. <laughs> I have decided that in these rooms here, we are gonna be doing something slightly different than the rest of the house. Usually you would just be putting on a wooden uh, skirting board around the edge of the floor, but I've decided in here, and the utility as well, that we're gonna be doing a tiled skirting board with a really nice black edging strip. It's gonna look nice, but it's gonna take some time, and it also means that I've gotta do that before I can grout it, because I've also gotta grout the skirting, the tiled skirting board as well. You'll see, it's gonna look really nice.
about what you want to say, Holly? So from your point of view, this shit was really quick. <laughs> Our point of view was really not. <laughs> so from your point of view, the tiling probably took about a minute. However, from our point of view, to get this far, sticking the tiles down, took about seven days. Took me seven days, Holly. Didn't see you do much. I was more of a hindrance, <laughs> turns out. <laughs> but if you actually start to look around, you can see how many cuts we have to do to fit around all of our awkward walls and also the uh, tiled skirt board, what are you saying, Holly? I love it. I think it was a genius idea that you had. You Sorry it took you an extra like week. <laughs> it, it took me about an extra three days, I think, to do the tiled skirting board, but you don't really see it very often. And I think it looks super nice, super sparked. I love it. However, I hate to say it, that we are not done. And you might be able to see that the grouting has not yet been done. And this is one of the messiest jobs. Do you know what's quite weird as well though, Holly? What? The angle I'm filming you at right now is I'm sat on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> we can't show you. <laughs> Imagine me in the downstairs toilet sat on it and filming you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so after all of that hard work that James did, we can now reveal the floor. Bear in mind that the utility is still not quite done. Downstairs toilet, not quite done, but the floor is done and we absolutely love it. Really?